Have you ever stumbled upon a movie that's a perfect blend of funny, shocking, and sad? Well, if not, then I saw what you did might just be what you're looking for. Released back in 1965, this film has stood the test of time, remaining a symbol of the industry's creativity and suspense. The plot revolves around two teenage girls who, as a prank, make random phone calls saying, I saw what you did and I know who you are. Little do they know, one of their jokes ends up triggering a series of chilling events. As the story unfolds, you'll find yourself on the edge of your seat, experiencing a roller coaster of emotions. What makes this movie timeless? Perhaps it's the gripping storyline, the stellar performances, or the way it keeps you guessing till the end. But hey, don't take my word for it. Watch it for yourself, and see why it's still talked about decades later. As for the characters, there are many to choose from, each adding their own flavor to the narrative. But if I had to pick a favorite, it'd have to be the mysterious stranger whose identity keeps you guessing throughout. Now, I'm curious, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie? Share it with us in the comments below. We'd love to hear your stories and memories. So, grab your popcorn, sit back, and get ready for a ride full of twists and turns. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. And remember, there are plenty of funny, shocking, and sad facts waiting to be uncovered. Keep watching to find out more. In 1965, a movie hit the screens that shook up the world of suspenseful movies. Directed by William Castle, it brought new ways of telling stories and keeping viewers on the edge of their seats. The story follows two girls who play dangerous prank calls, leading to unexpected consequences. With its eerie vibe and surprising twists, the movie quickly became a favorite among thriller fans. Even today, its themes of curiosity and the fallout of mischief still resonate with audiences. This classic continues to entertain, reminding us of the power of a good suspense tale. In the past, there were interesting stories about some famous personalities. One of them involved a movie where a character called The Shadow was played by Alec Baldwin. He was known for another role in a movie called The Hunt for Red October. Interestingly, another actor, Harrison Ford, took over his role in the sequels. This movie also featured Ann Archer, who played the character's wife. Another intriguing story revolves around Joan Crawford and her daughters Kathy and Cindy. Crawford initially claimed they were twins, but later it was revealed they were born about a month apart. It was found out that they were illegitimately acquired by Crawford. The twins later found their biological relatives and learned tragic details about their birth parents. In a TV show called Feud, Jessica Long portrayed Joan Crawford, depicting the complexities of her life and career. In this 1965 movie, Joan Crawford took charge of her own film wardrobe and jewelry for her brief appearance. Despite being a cameo, her influence on the film extended beyond just acting. During the promotional rounds for Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, in 1962, Bette Davis shared an interesting tidbit. When both Davis and Crawford were initially proposed for the lead roles, Warner Brothers studio head Jack L. Warner dismissed them with a less than flattering remark. Davis later received a telegram from Crawford, asserting her displeasure at being referred to as an old broad. John Crawford, not to be confused with Joan, made a mark in the film industry, transitioning from American roles to significant parts in England. His portrayal of a cutthroat villain in Hammer's neo-noir hell is a city showcased his ability to steal scenes. Joan Crawford's involvement in this 1965 movie goes beyond her on-screen role. Bette Davis's recounting of studio dynamics during the promotion of another film sheds light on the behind-the-scenes dynamics. Joan Crawford's role in the movie was intended to be a brief appearance despite receiving top billing. Sarah Lane, the daughter of Sarah Anderson, also appeared in the film. Interestingly, Joan Crawford's films in Italy were typically dubbed by Tina Latanzi, with Lydia Simonski handling most of her work in the 50s. However, there was an instance where Gemma Gryarati provided the dubbing for her character in a re-release of Grand Hotel. Leif Erikson, originally named Glenn Erikson, began his career as a singer and trombonist before transitioning into films in 1933. He often portrayed roles in westerns based on Zane Grey novels and later gained recognition as Big John Cannon in the TV series The High Chaparral. The setting of the Mannerings Lawn and Barnyard was constructed indoors at Universal City Studios, featuring fake trees and fog machines to simulate an outdoor environment. Matte paintings were used to create landscape imagery. Joan Crawford, known as Billy in her childhood, grew up in Lawton, Oklahoma, where her stepfather managed the Ramsey Opera House. She enjoyed watching vaudeville acts perform on its stage during her youth. In 1965, a film was released that brought together two actors whose names were separated by just one letter Joan Crawford and John Crawford. 
Interestingly, Joan Crawford, whose real name was Lucille Lesser, didn't particularly like her new name and preferred to be called Billy in private. She even encouraged others to pronounce it Joanne Crawford. The film, the only one featuring both Joan Crawford and John Crawford, was titled I Saw What You Did. Before their Hollywood days, Joan Crawford, Ginger Rogers, and Jean Harlow all lived within a few miles of each other in Kansas City, Missouri. Jean Harlow also resided in Kansas City, while Ginger Rogers lived in Independence, Missouri. Notably, the house of future president Harry Truman stood between the neighborhoods where these soon-to-be stars grew up. Despite their proximity during their formative years, their paths didn't cross until they found themselves in the world of Hollywood. But it's intriguing to think about the close geographical ties they shared before they became household names. In 1965, a movie brought together two actors, John Crawford and Joan Crawford. Interestingly, despite sharing similar last names, they were not related. This coincidence added an extra layer of interest to the film. Joan Crawford, a famous film star, once said, you make toys, you don't make stars. This quote reflects her view on the film industry and the idea of stardom. As for John Ireland, another well-known actor, he appeared in an Italian film called Blood River in 1974, indicating his involvement in international cinema later in his career. The combination of these actors and the unique connection between their names added depth to the dynamics of the movie. It allowed them to showcase their talents and contribute to the overall impact. In the world of Hollywood, one actress stood out for her remarkable performances in several memorable films. She gained recognition for her roles in six movies that have been acknowledged by the National Film Registry. These include a diverse range of films, such as a historical epic, a classic ensemble piece, and a psychological thriller. At a pivotal moment during the Academy Awards in 1962, this actress found herself entangled in a significant Oscar moment that underscored the rivalry between her and another prominent actress. Despite not being nominated herself, she played a crucial role in presenting an award, which fueled tensions between her and her counterpart. The following year, she was involved in another Oscar incident, further intensifying the ongoing feud. This event highlighted the strained relationship between the two actresses and added to the drama surrounding their careers. In 1964, plans were in place for the two actresses to collaborate once again on a film project. However, behind the scenes conflicts led to unexpected changes, ultimately resulting in one actress being replaced, causing a stir in the industry. Despite the tumultuous relationships and backstage drama, this actress's professionalism on set left a lasting impression, even earning acknowledgement from her rival years later. The competitive nature of Hollywood during that era played a significant role in shaping the narrative surrounding these two actresses and their complicated relationship, 